welcome everyone to today's video. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're having a good day. And I am going to discuss my long-term experience riding track lacrosse. Now, one thing that I wanna address that is missing, I'm sure you can tell, is that I'm not rocking the saddle water bottle holder anymore. I actually got brackets to go in the frame that fit and hold my water bottle cages. So don't have to worry about that reaching behind me. But I'm on my way now to my first real gravel trail. That one I just did, it was kind of a detour. But yeah, I'll show you my setup, what I've changed since the last fixed gear video, and let's go. So the one component that really allowed my bike to be able to go off-road was the Panaracer Gravel King EXT tires. Now it still struggles going through sand, but from everyone else's comments and experience that they've told me, sand's kind of unavoidable unless you have mountain bike tires. That's one thing that I have to accept that I'm still gonna get bogged down through sand. And these tires at like 30 to 40 PSI only inflate to about 30 C. So I'll put a picture right here. It's not truly a 33 C tire. Maybe the rim has something to do with it, but otherwise it's still granted me the ability to go off road. Oh gosh. So the first gravel road I usually hit up isn't too long, but it will dump out into this main street that this county is developing so quick that it's a mix of gravel roads and then development. So it's kind of an interesting dynamic, but that's why I wanted to have my gearing where it could handle the road as well. And I changed my front chain ring from a 48 tooth to a 46 tooth and then a 17 tooth cog in the back. And I'm really enjoying it. I think it does well for both gravel and road out here, especially since there's not any major hills in Florida. And that's the reason why I have these single-sided SPD pedals because I don't really intend on taking my feet off and on the pedals too often. Now I know there's some squirrely situations where I have to put my foot down, but I've gotten coordinated where I can clip in pretty quickly again. Oh, and then I went back to my compact drop bars. I know I just don't like the feel and shape, but actually trying out my flat bars then to my bullhorn bars, my wrists just hurt with those two bar setups. And then finally I went back to the compact bars and these make my wrists hurt the least, if not at all. So I'm just gonna stick with these compact drop bars. But I'm also thankful that the previous owner didn't cut the steer tube any shorter because it's at the perfect height and then the top cap is nice and flush with the stem. All right, coming up to my second gravel road and the beginning part is super rough so I definitely won't be able to fail. Maybe I'll try the handlebar mount. Finally, we're starting to head to spring and there's no daily overcast anymore. But I wanted to stop here because I will say some of the gravel out here where I live is really technical. I've really come to realize that you have to pick your line, especially with these smaller tires, precisely because your front wheel will wash out like crazy. And there has been probably every single ride I've had really scary situations, <laughs> but I've learned to correct them. You know, you gain the skill with that. I wish I could try fatter tires on this because again, the Pake Rum Runner is supposed to have clearance for 35C tires. Some people have reported it 
can't work, but one day in the future, I'll get that. Yeah, but like I mentioned, I found brackets to hold my water bottles here. So now I have two water bottles in the traditional location. I changed to the zip seat post because I needed actually a little bit more setback for my reach with this build. But also I know that a zero offset seat post, especially when you're going through rough terrain, really shoots the vibrations into your spine. So I know that a seat post with a little bit of setback actually has a bit of shock absorption characteristics. So this one has been working perfectly because it has the two bolt adjustment. So I get that perfect angle and setback. As you can tell, I'm in the middle of an orange farm here and the sun is hitting the frame just right. Look at this glitter flake on it. All right, time to mount up again and hit the highest gravel hill on my route. So if you notice when I'm riding on the gravel road, I'm sometimes on the left side or the right side of the road and never really in the middle. What I've discovered is there's kind of this washboard effect that happens in the middle of the road and sometimes it's just so jolting and the vibration is crazy that I'll ride on the left or right side. But then also because of the smaller tires, I have to make sure I don't hit any sand patches. So that's another reason why I sometimes will ride on the wrong side of the road. But then I realized having my gear a little bit taller, if I hit those sand patches and I don't maintain my speed, I bog down horribly. And sometimes the sand is just too deep and I have to do the walk of shame, but that just comes with the territory of track lacrosse. And that's the thing too, there are so many more trails that if I had fatter tires and potentially maybe lower gears, I could probably hit up and that is in the works if you've seen my Instagram. So I relatively ride at a slower speed because man, sometimes you'll just hit this hidden sand and it'll wash your wheel out. And again, like I've mentioned, I've come real close to really eating it. But that's another characteristic too that I found out is usually when I'm sprinting, regardless of the bars I have on my bike, I'm putting my weight forward on concrete. But when you're on the gravel road, if you're putting your weight forward and you hit a uh, soft spot, you, it'll buck you so quick. And another time, I've come close to really eating it and flying over my handlebars. So when I'm sprinting on the gravel roads out here, I put my weight a little further back where I can kind of feel my seat hit me sometimes, but I'd rather do that because if you get that bucking effect, then you can really keep your center of gravity between your wheels and not over the front wheel. This is a gravel road where when I reach the end, I have to turn around because it dumps onto the many roads out here that have no shoulders whatsoever. All right, like I mentioned, I have to use paved roads to connect to other gravel trails. So I'm on to my last one, and this is where I utilize the drops in my drop bars because I gotta travel about a few miles south to reach my final gravel road.
Oh yeah, doing the walk of shame now. The sand is so deep though. It's like I'm walking on the beach and there's so much sand in my shoes. But in the meantime, while I'm walking, you know another thing that everyone has done and raves about and I haven't done is going tubeless. I didn't go tubeless on my state bicycle. Never had a pinch flat. I'm not tubeless on these wheels because it is possible with the archetype wheels. I've hit pretty big rocks and everything, hard curves. I still haven't gotten a pitch flat, so I still can't comprehend why people are getting flats left and right when they're arguing that tubeless is better. I don't know. I'm not saying I'll never do it one day, but it seems like kind of a pain instead of just swap it a tube super quick. Oh, and then that's the thing, the Gravel King EXT tires were really easy to mount on my wheels. Okay, finally passed the sand. Okay, I'm bogged down again. So the rest of this trail seems extremely sandy. Some days are better than the others. So I think today is one of those days where the sand is really dried out and it's super loose. I can't continue on, unfortunately. I have to turn around. My tires just sink too deep into the sand. So let me turn around, uh, find a road, and then I'll end this video for today because I think that's the end of my gravel route for the rest of the day. Sometimes riding through these gravel roads with these crops, they have bee farms nearby too. So <laughs> there's bees flying left and right. And you kind of have to close your mouth a little bit because then you wind up swallowing one and possibly getting stung. So if you are allergic, uh, I don't recommend right now here. All right, back on my side of town and on the very last gravel trail, so I'm gonna conclude this video here. Now, I will say a few points. The Gravel King EXT tires are really good. I do like them. I just feel like it's a little too rough for them to be actually 30C instead of the 33C that they claim. Hopefully I can get some fatter tires out here soon. Another thing as well is I had that creek come back in my crank set and someone suggested me to use a torque wrench. And I did, and the creek hasn't returned since. But riding through all this sand, there's so much sand in my shoes, and then your drive train gets really crunchy sounding. Just regular cleaning, I'm sure it'll last a while since it's a single speed. This should be called a walking vlog, not a bike vlog. Okay, finally, I don't have to walk anymore. But again, thank you so much for watching, liking and commenting on the video and subscribing. I appreciate y'all sticking around, especially with my downtime because I get so busy with the property and everything. Still, I really want to keep producing that content for y'all. And if I didn't cover anything, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to answer all the questions as much as I can. Uh, but again, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.